glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, family, for connecting with us once again today for Revival Hour in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, last week we couldn't uh, broadcast, but this week, today, we are back online uh, and to share with you God's word and to spend time in prayer uh, and at the allowing God to have his way in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, just another time maybe to remind somebody that Revival Hour is on, especially for those that... Uh, because of last week we couldn't connect but let's just remind somebody by tagging them and by sharing this live broadcast and so that somebody can connect and hear God's word and let their lives be touched in the name of Jesus hallelujah this is revival hour a time of God's word and a time of prayer in the name of Jesus that the Lord may be glorified so let's just commit this session before God in prayer in Jesus' name. Father, we pray and raise, oh God, at this hour before you in Jesus' name, that you may have your way, O oh King of glory, that you may touch the lives of your people, Lord, through this ministration in Jesus' name, that you may glorify yourself this hour in the name of Jesus. We commit before you and say, have your way, O oh King of glory. Show yourself strong this, after, this evening in Jesus' name. May you be the prayer answering God to somebody. May you be the healer, O oh God. May you be the God who answered the why question to somebody, Lord. May you deliver somebody and revive them in the name of Jesus. Let there be the flow of your mighty presence and your power in this broadcast in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you for connecting with us, trying to get the scripture uh, so we can go into God's word and hear what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. In the name of Jesus. Uh, we just want to remind ourselves of something very important in the sight of God, in our walk with God. Something that is very important this evening, we're reminding ourselves. The Bible says in Psalms 91, Psalms 91 verse 1 and 2, Psalms 91 verse 1 and 2, to remind ourselves of something very critical in the sight of God. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, hallelujah. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, just a second. Just the Lord. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you. We all together now. Uh, Psalms 91 uh, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says he who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And verse 2 says uh, I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Hallelujah. He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, this, this person who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, this is what he will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. In him I will trust in the name 
of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us just to remind ourselves of something very critical that at all times this one needs to ring within our spirit, to ring within our mind, to be conscious of every time in our journey here with God in the name of Jesus. The importance of dwelling in God, dwelling in God, the importance of dwelling in God in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he who dwells in a place called the secret place. And the owner of that secret place is called the most high. And when you dwell there, you shall abide or you shall reside under the shadow of the Almighty. And the person who is dwelling in the secret place, this is what they will say in verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Hallelujah. There is some, a, a word there, but I want just maybe quickly let to look at that word uh, because we are dealing with dwelling in God. I want to just us to talk about the importance of dwelling in God and utilizing Psalm 91 as our base scripture. And, and they say he would dwell. And the word dwell, it means to abide. In other words, he will abide in the secret place. He will reside in the secret place of the Most High. Meaning you are locating yourself in a place with no intention of living. That is to dwell. To dwell, it means being located in a place with no intention of of living, hallelujah, to the most high. It means to remain in a place, to remain in a place, to remain there, to abide in a particular location, to abide in a particular place, to remain, to be residing in a place with no intention of living. I'm going to repeat this one. It's telling us that he would dwell, now the word dwell there, when we look at it from the strong concordance, it means to abide, it means to reside, it means to be located in a place, it means to stay Stay in a location without the intention of living. Staying in a place with no intention of living. So when we bring this uh, definition into that psalm shortly so that it brings bring understanding. Meaning you are located in a place. Now when we bring that definition in Psalm 91 verse 1, it says he would dwell. Meaning he was located. He was stays in a place with no intention of living. He will reside in a particular place. Now, the place in which Psalm 91 verse 1 is referring to, that place is called the secret place place, a secret place. And you and I, when Jesus is teaching about prayer in, 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 in Matthew chapter 6, is, the, is refer the place of prayer is in the secret place, the place where one dwells in order to interact with God is referred to as in the secret place, a place where you are fellowshipping with God, a place where you lock out the outward world and lock in yourself with God. That place is called the secret place. It is a place for you to interact with God. It is a place for you to approach God. It is a place for you to seek God. It is a place of prayer. It is a place of meditation according to the word of God. Meditating on the scripture. The place where you are interacting with God. You close out any other things and close in with God. That place is called a secret place. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. So now Psalm says verse 1 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place and 
another information that we are getting, the, secret, the owner of the secret place in this verse is referred to as Most High. Most High means Elion. Sometimes we say God Most High means El Elion. Elion means the strongest of the strong. Or another word, the strong one. The strongest of the strong. The strongest strong one, meaning Elion, El El most high. The God who possess all the power, the ability, who, who has no rival, no competition, who has no challenger, who possess all the power, the most high, El Elion, the strongest of the strong. Now the scripture here is encouraging you and I and say, he who dwells in a place called secret place and the owner of that place is the most high, that person shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai, of the Almighty in the name of Jesus. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And to dwell is to stay in a place with no intention of living. To reside there, it's like it's your location. When we are looking for you, where are we going to find you? We're going to find you at your place of residence. If your place of residence is in Johannesburg, it means that where you reside. If by any chance somebody finds you in Durban, it means there you are visiting. You are temporarily in Durban. Maybe on a holiday, maybe visiting relatives, but it's not your place of residence. The place of your residence is Johannesburg. That's where you stay. So some they say he who stays, he who is located in a place called a uh, secret place which belongs to the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and that person because you are dwelling in God you are not visiting God you are dwelling in the secret place the secret place has become your place of interaction with God not the once of visit but you are located there time and again you are in the secret place time and again Again, you are in communion with God. You are there. Verse 2 says, this person will say of the Lord, the Lord who is Yahweh, the God who keep covenant, the God of many people, because of dwelling in his secret place, now the person, he will say, he is my refuge, not our refuge, my refuge, my, my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust my God, the, not, not God, my God, not our God, my God. Because I have been in a secret place and I have understood and I have revelation on how God operates and how God is and how what God does. This God is no longer God, he has become my God. He is no longer our God as a group, he has become my God. God. Why? Because I have found the residence in a place called the secret place and this the owner of that secret place called Most High has brought revelation within my heart that causes me to say he is no longer the God of many people. He has become my refuge, my, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Glory to Jesus. He is now my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Glory to God. He, is no, he has become a personal God. He said, my God. Like one can say, my wife. It means because there is a relationship that has been established. As you can say, this woman is my wife. Or this man is my husband. A relationship has been established. Now in this case, a relationship has been established. Now God, who is the God of everyone and many people, is no longer God has become my God. God as a result of dwelling in him.
We're dealing with dwelling in God. He is no longer the God of many people. He has become my refuge, my personal refuge. He has become my personal fortress. He has become my personal God. As a result, I will trust him. I know things may not go well at this time or the other time, but I will choose to trust him because I have a revelation that is not God that I am dealing with. I am dealing with my God. I hope you get it. He's no longer God anyway. He has become my God, personal God. Why? Because I dwell in him. I am not visiting. I am not coming to God here and there. The secret place has become my location. And because of my interaction with God, God has become now my God, my refuge, my fortress, my God. And in him, I will trust. I know how he operates and I will trust him. I know when I am in the secret place, I understand the operation of God and my trust can be put in him. Other people may not understand why are you trusting God for this thing. It is because this God has become my God and not their God. The revelation of God that you have from the secret place has built a trust, a faith in you to be able to trust God. That is the power of dwelling in the secret place. It means other people will think you are crazy. How can you trust God for such a thing? It's because they don't have the revelation that you have, which has come out of your secret place, has come out of the place of interacting with God, of dwelling your residence in God. God, and so you have the revelation of God in this way, in the name of Jesus. He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then when we read, uh, uh, people of God, every time we read Psalm 91, you need to understand that the key is locked in verse 1. Verse 1, that where the key is. When you understand verse 1 and verse 2, the moment now you get to verse 3, 4, 5, until 16, those now are benefit of the person who dwell in the secret place, who stays in God, who stay with God with no intention of living. A person who is not visiting God, but remaining in God. And as a result, verse 3 is their benefit. Verse 4 is their benefit. Verse 5 of Psalm 91 is their benefit. And so on and so forth until verse 16. Those are benefit because of dwelling in a place called the secret place of which the owner is God. We are dealing with dwelling in God. And one of the benefits of dwelling in God is that God now responds to the cry of such a person who dwells in God. Verse 15, we're still in Psalm 91. Verse 15 says, He shall call upon me. Who is the he? Is the same person of verse 1. He who dwell. This same person, because he's in a place uh, uh, with no intention of living, and God knows you are not visiting God, you are abiding, you are remaining in God. He knows you that that your location is to abide in him. Then verse 15 say, he shall call upon me, he shall call upon God, and what will God do? And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. I will be with him in trouble. You can be dwelling in the secret place when you are going through a rough time. It does not mean God has abandoned you. When you cry out to God, he will quickly respond. He will quickly come. He will attend to your cry. Why? Because you are in his place. You are dwelling in him. You are abiding in him. You are not a visitor. You are a resident of the secret place. And so when you call on God, God responds. And when he comes and they are trouble, he pull you out of trouble and honor you in the name of Jesus. Because of staying in God. Staying in God. Dwelling in God in the name of Jesus. 
Let now make it like this, even practical. Even in the natural, you yourself, when somebody is visiting you, there is no, there is a limited things you will do with them when they are visiting you. When you know this person reside with you, you share your plan with them. You even talk about your investment for the next five years. You, you share your heart with them. Why? Because you know this person stays here and their intention is not to leave. But if one is a visitor, you yourself, your visitor that has come to you for two days, three days, you won't share with them much. Why? Because you know they are here with no intention of, uh, of staying. In no time they will leave. They are visiting. But God, the moment one dwells in God, you become a friend of God. You become in a place when, when you call on God, he responds. You become in a place when you are in trouble, you cry out to God, he responds. Why? Because God knows you are there for him. You are dwelling in him. You are not using him. You are not visiting him because you are in trouble. No, he knows you are there for him. And when you cry out, he responds. When you cry out, he comes. He knows you are not using him. That is the power of dwelling in the secret place. Because in the time of trouble, when you call, he comes. In a time of goodness, when you call, he comes. Because he knows you are not a visitor. You are there to stay. You are there abiding. That is is your residence. That is your place to interact with God in prayer, in worship, in understanding the ways of God, in applying the word of God. You are there to stay. When God says you move in fear and do what he says. When you discover what the word of God says, you move in fear, in reverential fear to God and walk according to that word. When it's like that, you are dwelling in a place called the secret place. And in that place, Psalm 91 verse 15 say, when you call, he comes. <laughs> when you call, he comes. And every time God, uh, you call, God comes. You have to be, in a, it, it means it's a nice place where you have arrived. When now, uh, when you call, he comes. When you cry out to God, he comes. When you pray, he responds. When you cry, he uh, comes. Why? Because God himself knows you are not using him because you are there to stay. Dwelling in the secret place of the Mosai in the name of Jesus. Why? As Christian, we need to understand. Uh, Acts 17 verse 28 says, In him we live and move and have our being. Meaning we can't live outside him. We can live outside God. We can live outside Jesus. In him we live, we move and have our being. He who dwells, not he who visit, he who dwell, not him who comes temporarily, he who dwell, not him who comes because they are in need, he who dwell, not him who comes because they are in need of that, he who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai. Verse 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 16 will be your benefit because you are dwelling in the secret place. You are staying in that place with no intention of living in the name of Jesus. Now let's start bringing it home. Uh, another thing I just wanted to mention is that you will observe many Christians are visitors of God and the things of God rather than dwelling in God and in the things of God. I'm going to repeat that again. Many Christians are visitors of God and the things of God rather than become people who dwell in God, who remain in God, who remain in the things of God. God in the same way a natural person will feel being used by somebody else if only they are coming for you for stuff and when they get what they want from you all of a sudden they disappear is in the same way when you are a Christian and you are coming to God because you've got a headache and God gives you a panado and when the headache goes you disappear when you are in trouble you run to God then God come through for you but when things 
things are fine. You are nowhere to be seen in the secret place. It means you are not dwelling. You are a visitor. And God desire us to dwell, not to visit. God wants us to dwell and not to visit him. God wants us to abide and not to visit him. God wants us to stay and not to take him as a by the way thing. That if now I am in trouble, let me run to God. When things are in order, uh, there is no way. You will see me in the secret place because things are fine. It means such a Christian is a visitor of God and not a person who dwells in God. God wants us to dwell in him. You will see even Jesus, uh, and that uh, maybe second scripture before we pray, second last. In John chapter 4, 15 verse 4. John chapter 15 verse 4. This is what Jesus says concerning the same matter. God desires us to dwell, to abide, to stay in a place with no intention of living, not visiting God, coming to God and remaining there before found there, he who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And he will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. In the name of Jesus. Glory. This is what Jesus says. Abide in me and I in you. He's using again the same word. To dwell, to abide, the same uh, uh, type of word, same definition. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If you have to do something spiritual of such significance, it cannot be done when you are outside there, when you are a visitor of God. It will be done when you dwell in God. Be it in business, if you want to do something of significance in the marketplace, it is because you are abiding and is giving you the, the idea, is giving you the revelation is inspiring you so that when you go into the marketplace you carry exploit. Why? You are not alone. God is backing you up as a result of abiding in, in him. Jesus said abide in me and I in you. And giving us now an illustration. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Meaning we see the branches of a tree producing fruit. It's because those branches are connected to the trunk. And from the trunk, they are getting nourishment, supplies that goes into the branch and cause the branch to produce fruit and cause the branch to bear fruit. So he's saying now, when you are not abiding, there is no way you will produce fruit. When you are not dwelling in God, there is no way you will produce fruit. The, life is a spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Whether it's marriage, marriage is spiritual. Whether it's church, church is spiritual. Whether it's business, business is spiritual. Whether it's work, work is spiritual. Everything we do, they are spiritual. So you need the backing of a spirit. Even the people who practice wickedness, who are witches, they've got the backing of a spirit called the devil. And you, you when you are in the marketplace, you need the backing of the true spirit, the spirit of God. And that backing comes because you are bound. Because you dwell, because you stay in a place with no intention of living. Let us be people of dwelling in God. I'm reminding you today what God started ministering in the week earlier. Uh, the, the, the importance of dwelling, not visiting God, dwelling. God knows when you are visiting and God knows when you dwell. God knows when you are visiting him and God knows when you are dwelling in him. And the people who carry exploit, who do great things, is the people who choose to dwell. And by dwelling, God knows 
your heart. God knows your heart that he has your best interest at heart. When you are a visitor of God, God knows that this person is using me. In the same way, when you know somebody is using you, they may not have access to the, 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 what, the, the, the things you have. But when you know this person is here for me, for who I am, then the benefit, the things that you have, they can easily access them because I know you are here for me. You are not here for the things. So when we dwell in God, it means we are there for God. As a result, what God has, we also partake of it in the name of Jesus. Dwelling in God. Dwelling in God. Maybe let's read what the note here I wrote before we pray. Dwelling in God is about a life of following God for who he is and remaining committed to him and to his word. When you are in that place, you are dwelling. When you are in that place where you, there is continuous fellowship with God, you, you are not making God a by-the-way thing. If you have time, you will attend to him. It becomes like a by-the-way. You are not dwelling, you are visiting. Dwelling in God is where a life of a Christian that is now uh, after God for who God is and you remain committed to God and to his word. You are abiding in God. When there is continuous fellowship with God, you are abiding in God. And this abiding, if somebody is not born again, it starts by you receiving Christ first as your Lord and Savior and your continuous fellowship with God, your continuous fellowship with him and the application of the word of God, then the person is abiding. When you are in a place where you are moved by what God is saying, where you are moved and follow what God is saying, where you are for God, for who he is, you are abiding in God. Jesus, when he has ministered to, to, to the Jews and the Jews who have, have accepted his teaching, he put them on at side and he said to them in, in, in John chapter 8 and verse 31 and then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him he said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. Not you, you get to the word when it's convenient. You apply what is called. If you abide, if this word rests in you, the application is in you continuously and it's regulating the way of doing things in your life, then you are in a place of abiding in the name of Jesus. Abiding in God. God wants us to dwell. In him. My last scripture before we pray. Psalm 27, David says, to him, Psalms 27 and verse number 4. Uh, dwelling in God, dwelling in God. Psalms 27 and verse number 4 says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell. In the house of the Lord, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing I have desire of the Lord and that I will seek. I will go after this thing. What is that thing? That I may dwell. Not visit God. That I may dwell. Not go to God when things are, are bad. That I may dwell in the house. I may dwell in God. Dwelling in God means I am not visiting God. I am there abiding. In good season, I am dwelling. In season where things are rough, I am dwelling at all times. I am dwelling, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, not some days, all the days of my life, that I may that to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. God desires us to dwell, to dwell in God, to dwell in God. And I can tell you before we pray, God knows the people who are dwelling and God knows the people who are visiting him. 
And the desire of God is us to dwell. Psalm 91, we read verse 1. He who dwells. John 15, verse 4, Jesus said, abide in me. And in that John 15, he repeated again himself a couple of times, abide, abide, abide. Why? It's to show us that what God wants. He wants people who dwell in him. He wants people who dwell in him. And as a result, he responds to the cry of such people who are dwelling. He attends to their need. Why? He knows they are not using him. Even you, you know when this person is using me or is here for me. Or is here to get what he needs from me and he disappear or is here for me. And when you know that this person is here for me, then you attend to them. Then you willingly attend to them. Then you willingly attend to what they need. Why? Because you know they are not using you. They are staying. They are not visiting you. They are there to dwell. He who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty in the name of Jesus. He who dwell. An example here, one example before we pray. You will see, for instance, Hannah in First Samuel chapter 1. The Bible is giving us the account that year, year, year by year they go and worship the Lord and sacrifice. Though she had the issue of barrenness, but she decided to dwell. She was going there. She was not giving God conditions that if there is no child, I will not going to worship you. I will not going to sacrifice. She continued to apply the word of God. She continued to do the ritual. She continued to do the activity of a person who dwell, worshiping the Lord, sacrificing to the Lord until the Lord intervened and the matter changed in the name of Jesus because she chose to dwell. Choosing to dwell that the Lord may intervene in your life in the name of Jesus. So I brought this reminder before we continue and I want us to begin to pray. The prayer we are making here now is that the Lord may intervene in your life. Son, you know yourself, am I dwelling, Lord? And if you are not a person who dwells in God, this exhortation, this reminder must come to you as a, a, a wake-up call to say, Lord, I pray for your forgiveness where I have used you for things I needed, but there were no interest for you for who you are. I pray for your forgiveness. Where I have come to you because I was in need, not because I, I needed you, but it's because I needed the things I can get from you. Lord, here I am. I repent in the name of Jesus. And number two, because of dwelling in God, let the Lord intervene. We intervene for Hannah. Let the Lord intervene. Whatever the matter is before the Lord, let the Lord intervene in the name of Jesus. I want us you to pray those prayers in Jesus' name. Father, we pray this hour in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask you, O King of glory, every time we have come to you and visited you just because of getting things, to get things from you, we appeal for your forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time we have approached God, it was because we wanted to receive things from you and not who you are in the name of Jesus. Every time we we have visited you. We appeal for your forgiveness. For you desire people who dwell. As the scripture say, he will dwell in the secret place. So I pray for the grace to dwell in the secret place. To dwell in the place of prayer. To dwell in the place of worship. I pray for your people, Lord, for the grace to dwell and apply what the word of God says in their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray for the people who dwell, who hear the voice and move with godly fear and do what you have said concerning their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for the grace to dwell 
in the secret place upon somebody's life in the name of Jesus the resurrected Lord. Father, I am praying here for men and women desiring your intervention as they dwell in the secret place. As you respond, the Lord, according to Psalms 91 verse 15, may you respond into their lives. As you responded, oh God, to Hannah's prayer, the person who has been at the temple dwelling in the secret place, worship you, sacrifices unto you. May you respond. May you respond to somebody, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That any woman here trusting you for an opening, Lord, in terms of the work of their hand, I am asking you, Lord, that you may hear the prayer and attend, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayer this hour. Hear her prayer this hour. Hear the prayer of your people this hour, Lord. Respond to their need by the power in the name of Jesus. Respond to their need by the power in the name of Jesus. Respond to their work, oh God, their, their work in the name of Jesus. The work of their hand, may you attend to it, oh God. Oh, you know they dwell. You know they are there, Father, for who you are. May they experience the benefit, according to scripture, of your blessing the work of their hand, of you opening somebody's door in career, I pray in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. I am asking you, O oh God, that you may move without a restraint upon the lives of your people in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. Somebody, Lord, trusting you for relationship, strategic relationship that lead into marriage, O oh God. I pray that you may intervene in their lives. Lord, by virtue of them dwelling in you, staying in God, abide in God. I pray that you may intervene for somebody marital destiny, oh God, to be established by your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I am praying for your people that you may intervene. Father, I pray for somebody trusting you for employment, oh God. May the God of Israel intervene in the name of Jesus, son of the living God. May you hear the prayer and respond, oh God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, there is resurrected the law. For your word says in Psalm 91 verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him, oh God. Anybody Lord who feels stuck, I pray for your intervention. Let there be an opening into their lives in the name of Jesus. Let there be an opening concerning their career in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray may you intervene concerning somebody's ministry. Let the ministry open up as they dwell in you. Let the ministry open up as they abide in you. Let their ministry open up by the power in the mighty name of Jesus that resurrected the Lord. Lord, as they dwell in you, let the marketplace open up for their business by the power in the mighty name of Jesus. I am praying for every life here today as they dwell in you oh God and knocking at the door for opportunity. Let the door open by the power in the name of Jesus. Let the door open by the power in the name of Jesus son of the living God. Whoever is owed the money money belonging to you that is held up somewhere. We are appealing to God at this hour may intervene. Let there be a release of those funds into your life by the power in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Father, we shall call upon you. You will answer us. You will be with us in trouble. You will deliver us and honor us, O oh God. May you deliver somebody, O oh God, from any plague, any torment, any sickness. Let them be delivered. Let them be healed and be honored by the Lord. By the power in the mighty name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Father, we pray. We are praying here today. You are owed money. Money is due to you. And is held up somewhere. Is being delayed from being released unto you. I want us to stand and pray. According to Psalm 91 verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. In that situation that you are in, the Lord is with you. And he will not only be there, he will deliver 
and honor you. Shall we pray for the release of the money that is owed to you? Shall we pray for the release of the fund that is due to you? Be it you have done work and invoice, the money has not come. Or the money you have applied, that has to be released. Or the money that is due to you, but it has not yet been released. Now here by the power of God, let there be an opening for the fund to be released unto you in the name of of Jesus. Father, we pray here now in Jesus' name. Let there be a release of fund. Anyone here online connected at this hour whose owed money, whose money is due to them, whose fund is held up somewhere. Lord, we appeal by your power. May there be a release of the fund in the name of Jesus. May there be a release of the finances, oh God, that belongs to them in the name of Jesus. May there be a release of the fund in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let whoever has to sign, let them sign and the money be released. Whoever has to approve, let the approval come and the money be released. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. An interference of darkness, oh God, for the release of the fund. We pray by your power. Let the interference of darkness be defeated by the power in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you for the release. Let the fund be released in the name of Jesus. Let the fund be released in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We continuing to pray in Jesus' name, dwelling. God have brought us the reminder that we need to dwell in God. The people who dwell in God, God respond to them. The people who dwell in God, God knows they are not using him. He attend to them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we pray, Lord, anybody who is in trouble and the trouble is sickness, the trouble is attack of darkness, we are praying here now, may you be set free by the power of God. May you be healed completely by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray let the healing power of God flow through this channel and Father, into somebody's body and quicken their body. Let the sickness live. Let the disease leave their body by the power in the name of Jesus. The pain in their body. We command it to go by the power in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Anything in their blood system, Lord, we command it, oh God, to live by the power in the name of Jesus. Any HIV virus, we command it to leave your blood system by the power in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Any oppression of darkness in the night, you cannot sleep peacefully. You are under a demonic attack, under witchcraft attack, under satanic attack. Today we stand by the authority of the word of God according to Luke chapter 10 verse 19 that say behold I give you the authority to tremble on serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you so we stand by the authority in the name of Jesus we command the witchcraft at attack to cease in the name of Jesus we command the satanic uh, attack against your life to be defeated now by the power in the name of Jesus be the Deliver from any witchcraft attack. Be delivered from any foundational attack. Be delivered by the power in the name of Jesus. We shall call. The Lord will respond. We shall cry. The Lord will hear. We will appear. The Lord will respond and deliver you from all your trouble. Let the Lord intervene in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May your life be set free from demonic oppression in the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh Lord, we pray with thanksgiving in our heart in the name of Jesus. God desire us to dwell in him, to dwell in God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai shall abide, will reside under the shadow of the Almighty. And he will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine. So, uh, uh, unless it abide in the vine, 
neither can you unless you abide in me, dwelling in God, not visiting God, but being in the place whether you are in your wonderful season, you dwell in God. When things are rough, you dwell in God. You dwell in God at all times. David says, one thing if I desire of the Lord, that, one, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, not some days, all the days, not when things are good, all the days, not when things are rough, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. God desire us to dwell in him, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By God grace me, there's a part we didn't get to. Maybe tomorrow we will get and do some prayer again and let the Lord have his way in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. He desire us to dwell. Father, I pray for every life here, Lord, for the grace to dwell in you, to hear your voice, to be led by you, the grace to con for continuous communion with God, the grace to remain and abide in the secret place and interact with you. As it is, Lord, may you grant your people godly ideas in the secret place, other get innovation from the law, and once implemented the law, it will turn around their lives in the name of Jesus the cause of being in the secret place so I pray for the grace to dwell in the secret place for upon every woman every man to abide in you to dwell in the secret place uh, to interact with you let that grace be upon their lives uh, let the empowerment by the spirit of God to be in the place of prayer in the place of worship uh, in the place of getting the word of God, hearing the voice of God, in the place of following the ways of God, applying the word of God in the secret place. Let them abide and bear fruit. As Jesus say, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire. It shall be done for you. As Jesus says again, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Let it be so upon your people. May the grace to abide rest upon your people. May the grace to dwell in the secret place rest upon your people. May the grace to abide in you rest upon your people. Lord, as they abide, as they remain in you, may you give them information. May you grant them the wisdom. May you grant them the revelation. May there be mystery revealed unto them. May there be word coming from the throne of grace unto them. May they hear the voice of God. May they, yeah, they may be ordered. May their step be ordered by you. For the steps of a righteous, of a good man are ordered by the Lord. May you order their steps. May you inspire them, Lord, in the secret place. May you give them understanding, intelligence, oh God, in the secret place. May you give them, oh God, revelation of who you are in the secret place. As they dwell in the secret place in the name of Jesus. Father, we invoke your blessing over your people and your preservation of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow again, we're continuing uh, at the same time, same platform. And let us have a great time in God's word and allow God to minister uh, to us even as we hear his word and pray together with you and for you on this platform of revival hour in the name of of Jesus. So we're continuing tomorrow, same hour, same time. And on Sunday, we meet uh, for church service as per the address there on the screen. And we meet and have a great time and, 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 and allow God to move in our midst as we long and desire for revival, even in our time, in our generation, in the name of Jesus. And for those who are touched by God and, and you feel you want to sow a seed into this ministry, there are the banking details there on the screen for you to sow a seed or to give an offering to God's glory in the name of Jesus.
Remain blessed and preserved. And let connect again tomorrow, same time, same hour. Shalom, shalom, shalom.